to draw your attention to this question here. Yeah. Huh, this is awkward, right? This is unlike stuff that we've seen before. Why? It has a power of three. Yeah, good. We've only looked at equations which have either power of one, they're the linear equations we're looking at, or power of two, they're the quadratics. And you're like, I don't know how to solve this. And does anybody know what we call this type of equation? Cube. It's a cubic equation, right? So you're like, I haven't looked at this. This isn't in the course. If you look at the themes on the VLE, there's no cubic equations in there. But it's in here, which means that you must have the skills in order to deal with this. Anybody got any suggestions? Yeah. Right, take the glory. Or you take the x out. Okay, so you take an x out. You notice that in every single term, the x cubed, the 4x squared, and the 3x, there is an x common to every term, which means we can factorize it. So if I factorize an x out, what do I get inside the bracket? x squared plus 4x plus 3. Perfect. You happy with that? Okay. And you're like, huh, I totally know how to deal with that. Okay, I could factorize it. What would this factorize to? Somebody just tell me. Uh, x plus 3 times x plus 1. Perfect. And of course, you're going to get x times all of this. Okay? Great. Now, how do I finish this off? I clearly haven't finished it, because the question was solved. Find the value of x. How could I finish this off? So hopefully what you're noticing here is that you have x, which is just a, num it's just a number, okay? x plus 3, that's just a number, and x plus 1, just a number. What's happening with these three numbers? They're, multiplied. They're being multiplied together, and what do they have to make? A zero. They have to make zero. One of them has to be a zero, so we need to open. Spot on. So because you're multiplying three things together, and they make zero, you know the only way that can happen is if at least one of those things is zero. Does that make sense? So either this equals zero, or this equals zero, or this thing equals zero. Okay? Now obviously x equals zero, there's your solution sitting there in front of you. You've got x equals something. That's your solution. If x plus 3 equals zero, then what does x have to be equal to? And if x plus 1 equals zero, what does x have to be equal to? Now what do you notice here? Whereas before, up to now, we've only been looking at equations which have either one solution or two solutions. How many solutions do we now have? Three. So what do you notice about the relationship between raising powers, like different powers of these things called polynomials? So here we have the power of three. How many solutions? When we're dealing with quadratics, that was a power of, and we're looking for two solutions. And when we're dealing with linear equations, in other words, stuff like this, okay, what was the power? It was one, right? How many solutions were this? That's a good guide. Okay, if you're not sure how many solutions they're going to be, look at the highest power. 